Hey Rock Bags, it's Jade with a first look at the Public Test Branch. This is live now, everyone can join by joining Discord, looking up the Public Test Branch and it'll give you the details in the pinned messages on how to activate it on your Steam. So it's probably going to be here for about a week or two, but this is the first look at the actual Frost Caves if you missed the stream. And yes, I'm wearing all the brand new gear. There's three sets of pieces for the armour. You're going to get a hood, a coat and leggings and we'll go through the details about what benefits they provide. And you also get these brand new fantastic claws. Take a look, Wolverine fans. Yes, you're gonna enjoy this update. So as usual, you need to go and find a mountain you've not explored before to venture in or find a frost cave. Small mountains will have one, some of the large ones might have two or three possibly. Inside you are actually protected from cold, so if you wanted to, don't panic about bringing cold potions or anything, you should be okay, but obviously you're going to need something warm to get here. You'll come across the very first brand new enemy, bats. These are more annoying than actually life-threatening. They do small amounts of damage, although there are quite a few. You can be swarmed by up to four or five at once sometimes while exploring some of these, so you need to take them out in good order. Remember, this is just a showcase, so I am using cheats just to give you a heads up what to expect. You guys, I'm sure, will have your own methods, and I'll come up with some as well in the future. You'll get leather from the bats, and that's pretty much it. Inside these caves, you're going to find a nice, easy way to go and get crystal now. No longer having to kill just the snow or mountain golems, you can now find it a lot easier. These dungeons are massive and they're very unique. They're not like the dungeons you found in the swamps where it's pretty much all the same generic corridors. Sometimes maybe you'd be a bit longer than others, but these are definitely much bigger. There's more variety in terms of where you'll be going. You'll be going deeper into the actual mountains, into the frost caves itself, and sometimes you'll find the light ones. You'll also come across areas where doorways are and there are brand new enemies, not just the bats. So they can be very windy, going up and down and then reconnect. You've got to be very careful. One fall could potentially kill you because the drops are quite substantial. You'll also come across icicles that you can break, but they don't give you any resources and ice walls that reveal secret corridors to explore as well. But on these plimps, you're going to find Fenris hair as well as Fenris claws. Fenris claws used for making obviously the brand new fists, but it's also used for making a brand new brazier. You can find loot chests that will have rubies, gold and obsidian. And you'll find lots of natural light pouring through these light holes at the top. But obviously this is an instance cave, so it's not going to be exactly the same position as where you have been in exploring the mountains. Another common enemy you'll find all over these are the Olv. These are kind of half transformed wolves and they will do a lot of damage and swarm you you can find anything from up to four maybe up to nine or ten of these guys depending on the size of the actual cave they do quite juicy damage as you'd expect but nothing massive like not going to be doing any bleed damage or anything like that and i do believe they may be more susceptible to silver even though they're not technically undead they're more of a spooky natural kind of enemy so any silver weapons might do better against some of these You'll get wolf fang drops from these guys, mostly. They appear at the moment not to drop anything other than that, so you won't be getting any Fenris claws from these. While exploring, you'll come across a whole bunch of hieroglyphics on these, but they don't actually do anything, although you will find Moda location stones inside the caves. Usually behind these types of doorways is where you're going to find the toughest brand new creatures in the caves, and that is the cultists. This is also where you're going to be able to get the Fenris hair, Picking up your first piece is going to give you the recipe now for the leggings and your coat. The hood needs a special drop from the cultist enemies that we'll come across in a second. So as said, you may need to go pretty deep to explore some of these brand new caves. And definitely look out for them ice walls to reveal new areas. You'll come across these meat and bone piles where obviously you'll get fragmented bone, but also intestines. Sometimes loot as well, like a little bit of gold or the silver necklace. And one swipe of these curtains will sometimes give you the red jute. Not always, but yeah, you will get some, and that's what you can use to make your own special curtains later. So yeah, doorways are what to look out for if you're trying to find or hunt the cultists, as you're going to need a cultist drop to make the hood. The cultists are no joke. In fact, they could be one of the hardest new mobs added to the game ever. 
pretty powerful attacks with its claws, but obviously its huge fire damage can do massive amounts, up to 63 per tick, maybe more around that average. If you do manage to get hold of all the Fenris armor, that does negate a lot of that fire effect. You might only take anywhere between 3 and 15 damage per tick while wearing it all. You can find multiple cultists as well, as you can see there's three in just this one corridor. So yeah, you don't want to be coming down here unless you're fully prepared. Killing multiple of these guys, as I said, will hopefully get you that spawn of the cultist drop. And that's where you're going to need to make the hoods. The coat itself that you wear can actually negate frost damage, so it's good for exploring the cold. And you don't need anything else, just simply the coat on its own means that you can wear any kind of other hood, leggings or cloak and you'll be protected while exploring the mountains. Even in death though, you have to be careful because once you do take them out, they'll explode in a fiery ball. So it's best maybe to use ranged weapons. Obviously ice arrows or frost arrows will be a good one to see, but that's the kind of damage you saw there that they did. You can also get the red jutes directly from them, from their cloaks that they're wearing once you kill them. So the main thing that you're looking for, like I said, is the drops, but then you'll come to these altars that will have the Fenris hair on it, as well as the Fenris claws, and these are what you really need for the brand new weapon and armours. Both the coat and the leggings cost 20 Fenris hair, 5 wolf pelts and 10 leather scraps to craft. Both are going to give you a weight of 10, durability of 1000 and armour of 10, with the coat giving you the additional modifier of resistance to frost, as I mentioned. The movement speed is plus three, so wearing all three is going to give you a movement speed of minus nine percent. So there's no set value for exactly how much it negates, but I would roughly estimate around 85 to maybe 90 percent of the fire damage. When I wasn't wearing it, I was getting hit and damaged for around anywhere between 40 and 65, and then when I did put it on, it was anywhere between sort of three and 15. You'll also notice that if you wear all three again, you'll also get an unarmed bonus damage of 15, even without the claws. So you'll be doing 15 extra points of damage with just your fists. The hood itself, apart from the wolf and Fenris hair, which is the same, you're also going to need that cultist trophy. The Fenris claws, or the flesh rippers to give them their proper name, are going to use in 10 of your stamina, block armor of 5, block force of 10, parry bonus of 6, knock back of 20, Backstab of 6 plus. They are two handed weapon, obviously. The weight is pretty light at 2.0, durability is 300, and does slash damage of 60 with a modifier of 18 to 36. You'll need 10 Fenris hair, 6 Fenris claws, and 10 silver to craft. Defeating the Olvers does give you a tail trophy that you can hang up on a wall, and you can also put the claws on any trophy stand that you want. Likewise, the cultist trophy does go nicely on a wall too. As well as the curtains, you can make a rug that costs four of the red jutes and obviously does need workbench nearby. And a new brazier needs five bronze, two coal, three Fenris claws to craft and make. And then as normal, you can feed it coal to keep them going. So there we go, that is the first look at the Frost Caves. Officially, I think what this update will be called, all brand new armor sets, brand new trophies, three new enemies, whole new dungeons that offer lots of replayability because they're so different each time. Brand new weapon and three new build pieces. As soon as we get word about the update going live for everyone, I'll let you know. But otherwise, jump into PTP, give some feedback about what you think about the update, if there's any bugs or problems in the Discord, and I'll be back to showcase some more comparisons with the armor sets and the claws in future. Until next time, Ratbags, laters.